Hey everyone, I'm so excited for today's video and really just for this week in general. As I'm recording this, it is my birthday and I love birthdays. I love to make a whole week or even a month out of it. And I find that it's the perfect time to sort of step back and just feel the gratitude of all the blessings that are in our lives. And this year I have so much to be grateful for, including this crazy journey that we've been on over the past year, getting settled into our new home and just all the opportunities that have been flowing. It's been a really great year and you're a part of that. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of this community. You guys mean the world to me. And you know, part of that gratitude is really also looking back to all the changes that have happened in my life over the past 15, even 20 years, because it wasn't that long ago that I was stuck in a job that I did not love, really in a life that I did not love. But I had these big dreams for who I wanted to be and how I wanted to show up in the world. And a big part of those dreams for me was that I really wanted to be a writer. And I had no idea how I was ever going to get my books published or get them in the hands of readers. But I had been passionate about stories for most of my life. And I wanted so badly to learn not only how to write the best books that I could write, but also how to sell those books. And that led me down this journey of creating my own publishing company and publishing my own books. And just thinking about how far I've come in my journey and my career since then and how much that decision to self-publish my own books has changed not only my life, but the lives of everyone in my family is just staggering. And the fact that I now have the opportunity to teach some of you how to change your own life, how to make money publishing, how to get your books into the hands of readers, how to change not only your lives, but the lives you touch through your writing and the impact you're going to have on the world. Writing is so powerful, whether you're writing poetry or nonfiction, children's books, fiction, we have the power to change the world. And it's so amazing that we live in a time where we can publish those books ourselves and really take control of our own career. So I am just super grateful for that. My course, Publish and Thrive, is currently open for enrollment. We close enrollment on February 4th at noon, and then we're going to start later that afternoon with our kickoff call and module one. And I am actually heading <laughs> to Disney World uh, tomorrow with my best friend, Kelly. So I will not be here uh, this week to record a new video for you. So I thought it would be the perfect time to give you a little bit of a sneak peek of what's in the course. And this is going to be a video that comes from module one, where we discuss the importance of understanding genre. And truly, this is at the core of all success. Now, it if you understand what type of genre you're writing, that helps you position your book in terms of your cover, your title, all of your metadata, all of your packaging, all of your book's product, and even the elements that go into your book. So this is a super important topic and it'll give you a little bit of a taste of what's in the new version of Publish and Thrive because I first recorded this course back in 2019 and then I have learned so much over the last few years of not only teaching it but continuing to publish that I was very excited to have the opportunity to completely re-record the course with all new information, with even better explanations of the foundational material. And so alumni, you can come back through it with us for free. Anybody who hasn't joined before, this will give you a little bit of an idea. And then even if you're not interested in the course, hopefully this video will still be really valuable to everyone on my channel. So let's get started in a discussion about the importance of genre. Okay, so let's start talking about what actually goes into a great book that's going to sell, that's going to make you money. So the first topic that we have to address here is genre. Genre is defined as a category of literary composition characterized by a particular style, form, or content. So genres are typically arranged in a hierarchy where you have the main umbrella genre, and then that's broken down into multiple subgenres. And sometimes it goes really deep into different niches. This is basically how all bookstores are arranged, right? You walk into a large Barnes and Noble and you can see the title of the genre, like young adult, travel, self-help, <laughs> romance. They will have different sections in the bookstore, right? Virtual bookstores, which is where you will sell most of your books as an indie, whether directly on your website or at Amazon or Google or Barnes & Noble online, 
have unlimited shelf space, which means that they are able to break down their genres into smaller and smaller subgenres or categories. And understanding how that hierarchy works and where you fit into it is essential to selling books. So for example, the biggest genre umbrellas are poetry, fiction, nonfiction, drama, and prose. Most of the people in this course will be dealing with probably fiction, but we do have some people here with nonfiction and maybe we have a few poets, but those are just the huge umbrellas. And then think about how many different types of fiction there are. So you've got romance, mystery, science fiction, fantasy, young adult, middle grade. There's lots of genres underneath that umbrella of fiction. But then if you go to romance, for example, you've got fiction, romance, and then you have a lot of categories underneath that or subgenres underneath that, such as paranormal romance, contemporary romance, science fiction romance, fantasy romance. Then if you take, let's say, contemporary romance, you can niche that down even more into mafia romance, small town romance, sweet romance, erotic romance. So there's lots of different categories. And even underneath those, you can go down even further. So when it comes to contemporary romance in a small town, you might have different types of tropes that you would find in there, like enemies to lovers or second chance romance or a secret baby. There's lots of tropes that go under that. Now, the way the vendors are arranged when we talk about the shelves in a virtual vendor like an Amazon or Barnes & Noble is not exactly niched down in every single category as what you can imagine. So there's not a secret baby small town romance category at Amazon or genre at Amazon. However, you can help readers find your particular sub niche of contemporary romance by the right kind of cover, the right kind of title, and the keywords that you use, which we'll get into in next week's module. So how do we categorize all of these different genres and subgenres? Well, they're categorized by things like setting, characters, plot, mood, tone, and theme. These are just some of the ways that readers and vendors and movies and TVs and all kinds of places will subcategorize. So based on setting or the time in which this is set, is it set in Regency? Is it set in the Victorian area? Is it contemporary? It could also be the types of characters if you have a male and female lead and they're falling in love and that's the tone or the plot of the book, then it's gonna be a romance. So it's all of these factors that play together. And each of those genres and subgenres have their own conventions and expectations. And expectations is sometimes a difficult thing to come to terms with as a writer, but it is one of the most important things that if you can understand this now, it is going to help your career so much. Because when we start talking about writing great books and actually selling them, Part of that equation that is a huge percentage of that equation is understanding what genre you're writing and what elements readers expect to see and feel and experience in that book or genre. Think of these expectations or conventions like a list of elements that readers expect to find when they open your book. So remember we talked about the reader's journey and they're in that consideration phase and they're trying to make a decision about which book to buy. Well, when they're browsing on Google Play Books or Kobo Books or Apple Books or Amazon or any of these online vendors, they are looking at a variety of things. They're maybe inside a category or subcategory category list, like maybe they're specifically looking at contemporary romance books on Amazon, and they're looking at your cover art, they're looking at your description, if you're lucky, your tagline, they're looking at what other books you might have written, they're looking at what other books other people have read that also bought list and recommendations. And because of those elements, mainly your cover art and your blurb, they're feeling like you're making a promise to them. This is the type of book you're going to get. And the magic comes in when a reader is looking for a contemporary romance, secret baby, small town book. And your book has the perfect cover. It's giving them the perfect tone that this is going to be a sweet, like, 
second chance kind of book. And then they read that blurb and it says secret baby and it's got all the romance feels. And they're like, this is exactly what I've been looking for. So in that consideration phase, they see that this is the genre or subgenre or niche that I really want. This is the trope I was looking for. This is the information I was looking for. So if you're talking about nonfiction, maybe it's like they were specifically looking for a book that was going to help them overcome anxiety in a way that feels really good to them, that understands that they grew up with a narcissistic parent. And then you've got this cover that feels exactly like what they were looking for. It looks like it has scientific evidence mixed with, you know, therapy and other things. And then they read that blurb and it just makes them feel like this is exactly what I was looking for. Those elements that you put on the page make a promise to that reader that when you purchase this book and you put down your money, this is what you're going to feel. This is what you're going to experiment this is what you're going to feel. This is what you're going to experience. And this is the kind of information or the kind of, you know, feeling that you're going to get from this book or novel. So if a reader purchases your book, we talked about that decision phase, and then they get into that consumption phase and that book delivers, it's the secret baby of their dreams. It has all those elements that they were looking for in that niche. And that is usually based on the fact that they've read 50 other secret baby romances and that's why they love them so much. Or they've read 50 other sci-fi alien invasion books and that's the type of thing they love. And they love to see that type of hero and the, you know, aliens and they want to visually experience this world where there's aliens landed on earth, they already are coming into it with a set of expectations based on books, movies, and things they've consumed before in that genre or subgenre. So if your book is not like that at all, the aliens never land, there's never any of that same conflict that they expected, or it's, you know, we're back to the secret baby romance and it's like, well, she ends up falling in love with the guy that's not the dad of the baby. Like what is happening here? You know, however that may work, there are certain elements based on things that readers have read before that they're hoping for. Now they wanna see it in your way. They wanna see it in your voice, in your style, with your brand of humor or your brand of emotion. They want it to be different, but the same. They wanna see those elements they love in a new way. They wanna experience that story again, or that kind of story again, for the first time. Or when we're looking at nonfiction, there's certain things they expect. They want action steps or they want emotion. They want to feel seen. And so they have these expectations of what your book is going to deliver on. If they get into the consumption phase, no matter which genre we're talking about, and they don't feel that you delivered. They don't, they didn't get the feeling they want. They didn't get that fun, meet cute scene. They didn't really, you know, get to experience these people falling in love, or they didn't really care about these characters. They're not going to want to buy the next book in the series. And this is really where the magic of selling books comes in, is understanding what you're writing in terms of what genre and what subgenre and the subgenre and the category and the niche behind that and having such a clear understanding of what are the elements that people expect when they pick up this type of book and then delivering on that in your own unique way twisting it when you want to like oh this is the expectation but she did something different here and i really like that and that was fun and exciting you could put your own twist on it you don't have to copy someone else you don't have to boringly like you know, follow some kind of formula, but you just need to understand these are the types of things readers like to see in these kinds of books. And if you can deliver on that in your own way, then they're going to want to read every other book you've ever published, and they're going to want to tell all their friends about it. And that's how you start to sell books. This is how important understanding your genre is. A lot of times I will hear new writers say, well, it's not really like anything that's ever been done before. And they'll start telling me about how, well, it starts out as a mystery, but then midway through the book, he meets the love of his life and then it becomes more of a romance. But then by the end, his new girlfriend is dead and now there's aliens that come down and it's never been done before, this genre mashup or whatever. And I'm just going to tell you that you know, I'm never the one to want to tell people not to write what they love, but if you have such a misunderstanding of what genre is and why readers consume books, that you put something so wild on the page, 
it's just very, very unlikely that you're ever going to sell that book to great success, unless maybe it was meant to be kind of like a satire or a comedy of some kind. There are market conventions, genre conventions, and no matter how much of a rebel you may be, it is important to understand that if you want to sell books. And you can always do things in your own unique way. But it is so important to understand what those elements are and be able to take your book and your story and place it into some kind of appropriate genre so that you can say this is a secret baby contemporary small town romance. This is a young adult contemporary fantasy with a portal fantasy inside of it. This is a science fiction alien invasion heroic adventure story. And if you can't describe your book in terms of what genre or niche or subgenre it fits into, you will most likely struggle to sell your book. Romances, for example, have a happily ever after. Mysteries have some kind of usually murder or other mystery that needs to be solved. And specifically, psychological mysteries and thrillers will have their own set of elements separate from detective mysteries or police procedurals. Cozy mysteries will have their own set of elements. And so it's important to kind of understand the distinctions between those different genres. And I'm going to show you a little bit about how to do that. Now, it's also important to understand that many books are going to have multiple aspects of these genres. Now you may have a young adult contemporary fantasy like My Shadow Demon Saga that also has elements of mystery, like the actual plot structure of it is mystery. There's also a strong romance in this series that lasts throughout. So you've got elements of those things. You may have a mystery that has a romantic will they or won't they kind of element in it for multiple books that stretches out. You may also have an epic fantasy that has elements of all of these different genres. Maybe it's got humor, maybe it has some romance in it, maybe it has mystery and action adventure, maybe it also has paranormal elements or, you know, witchy elements to it. So it's going to have all of those things, but it's important to identify what is the umbrella genre, like what is the main genre of this book? Because if you can identify that, then you can start to figure out where it goes on those virtual shelves. And that's how readers will find you. Because if yours is an epic fantasy that has all those different elements, you wouldn't put it in contemporary romance or just a romance category. You would maybe put it in fantasy romance and you would put it inside the regular like epic fantasy or high fantasy category. So when you get a choice, and we'll talk about this in module two, most vendors give you more than one choice. Now, Apple is an exception. You get one category there and that's it. But most vendors will give you multiple categories. So you can put your romance book in multiple places. You can put your nonfiction book in self-help and psychiatry and divorce. So you can fit it in multiple places where it's appropriate. However, it's very important to understand if I only had one choice or one way to describe this in terms of its genre or subgenre, where would it belong? And knowing exactly where that is, is super important. So let me give you a good example of what I mean by these types of elements. So let's just zero in on contemporary romance, what we would call a romantic comedy or a rom-com. Here are some elements that I would expect to see after watching a bunch of romantic comedies on TV and reading a lot of romantic comedy novels. Now, every novel may not have each of these, but it should have a few of these elements because these are things that readers look forward to, and especially if you can put your own spin on it. So here are some elements, for example, of a romantic comedy. A lot of times there are two lovable main characters. There's a meet cute where there's something fun that they meet for the first time. There's often a goofy best friend, an ex who complicates things. There's the breakup. There's the light bulb moment where they realize they should have been together this whole time. There's the grand gesture where they apologize and make up. There's the happily ever after. And of course, because it's a romantic comedy, there should be humor. There's funny situations that these characters get them into. There's funny dialogue and banter between them. And a lot of times in a romantic comedy, it's that banter either between the protagonist and her best friend or the protagonist or hero and heroine who 
are bantering between each other and bickering because they're in some kind of funny situation. That's part of the fun of the experience. If a reader is going to pick up a romantic comedy and they get none of these elements that I just listed, they're going to be very disappointed. And so one of the things that you can do for yourself as an action step is to, first of all, establish what am I writing? Is this a science fiction alien invasion? Is this a hard boiled mystery? What type of romance is this? What type of niche is it? If you can't identify it, come into the Facebook group and let us know what you're writing and maybe we can help you. If it's just impossible to identify because it's like starts out this way and it turns into this and it turns into that, you've got some serious problems with your book and you need to start focusing in on what exactly this is. In my experience, the writers who are more specific and know exactly which genre and niche they're writing in are the most successful writers in this business. So how do you figure out what these elements are? First of all, I have given you a list. There's just a blog post that's really great that has like 144 different categories of genre and niches or subgenres. That is a really good place to start. And in there, they do give you some examples of types of books that are in each of these genres or subgenres. So that can be a good basic explanation. I have linked that in the description above this video. Other things that you can do. Google search. So let's say you know that you're writing a young adult portal fantasy. So you could search what are the elements of a young adult portal fantasy and start reading some blogs or Goodreads posts or other places that have already listed out some of these potential elements. Google can be your friend in this industry, trust me. You can also go on to each of the vendors and you can start keyword searching. So just search for young adult portal fantasy and see what comes up at Google Play, see what comes up on Amazon, and then start to read these books and see what are the common elements. Oh, look, there's another scene where the protagonist does this. Oh, look, in this zombie thing, like, Zombie fiction, it often happens where there's a moment where one of the characters gets secretly bitten, but they don't tell the rest of the crew. And then of course, there's going to be a scene later on where they turn into a zombie when they're all stuck in some room and they have to kill their friend. Like these are tropes. These are things that happen like universal elements in these genres. And so the more you read this genre, the more you'll start to identify. So take your author's eye, your analytical eye and start reading as many books in your chosen subgenre as you can and start making lists of what are the common elements. Okay, a lot of times, for example, if you look at young adult paranormal books like mine, young adult contemporary fantasy, you have missing parents, parents that have died or you're an orphan and now you've discovered that you have some kind of secret magical ability. So this happens over and over again, where it's either single parent or missing parent or drunk parent or absentee parents in some way. And the young teen discovers they have magical powers and belong to some other type of heritage. These are tropes, elements that are common and conventions. So the more you start to read in your chosen subgenre, the more you'll start to identify those elements. You can also, if you want to take the faster route, you can use TV and movies for this as well, because a lot of times they're based on books or they're the same genre. So you can tell from those TV and movies what elements people expect from those types of books or stories. You can also ask your peers. So joining writers groups, coming into our Publish and Thrive Facebook group and saying, okay, this is the type of book I'm writing. What do you guys think are the elements and start those conversations so you start to understand. You can also ask readers or start to look at reviews. So if you wanted to see what's all the fuss about Colleen Hoover, for example, who's like one of the most popular authors of all time, you could go into the reviews of her books and start reading what is it that people love so much about this? Oh my gosh, it made me cry. This tore my heart out. I loved these characters. I couldn't guess what was going to happen. I never saw that ending coming. And you can start to see those elements of why people love Colleen Hoover books. And the same would be true for any author that you went out there to start researching. You could find out a lot from their reviews. So these are some of the ways that you start to do market research to understand genre. If I could drive home to you just how important it is to write in a clear and established genre. Now, like I said before, I never want to tell people don't write what you love. I want you to write what you love. But like we'll talk about in the next video, your sweet spot is going to be figuring out how to write the stories that you love in a way that resonates with readers and that they understand in terms of genre expectations. So if you have any questions, put them down below and I will address them in our live Q&A. But genre is so important. And like I said, you may 
find that your book fits into multiple subgenres overall because it has some of the elements of things, but there should be one central description, one central genre that you are going to aim for when it comes to your cover art and your book packaging. And this is extremely important because if a reader finally lands on your sales page and they don't really understand what your book is promising, what kind of book is this? You're going to have trouble getting that sale. And that's what we're going to talk about next is writing books that actually. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. I am going to go finish packing for Disney, but I will be back soon. So if you have any questions about the course, you can put them in the comments below. I'll be checking in or feel free to send me an email if you have any questions that are more specific. I am so excited about this round of the course. We had our biggest launch enrollment ever. And so I know many of you are excited too. I cannot wait to go through it with you. I just know that it's going to support so many of you in fulfilling and beginning to take those steps towards your dream life as an author. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you come join us in Publish and Thrive. You'll find the links down below in the description. We're open till February 4th and I would love to see you in there. This is the only time I'm intending to run the course this year. Maybe later in the year if some time opens up or I drop a project, I'll be able to fit it in again. But right now I'm not intending to run it again until 2024. So now's your chance to come join us. So I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I hope you know how much I am grateful for you all and how much you have helped to transform and make my life better. So I'm very grateful. I love you guys and I will see you in my next video. Bye.